All right. All right, we're live. I'll let the viewers uh, roll in. Roll in. Percolate in. <laughs> Can't believe all of this technology came together. There yeah. is there is a octopus of technology in front of us right now. You can't, yeah. It's all magic. The magic of television. The magic of the internet. You have no idea. It was so easy. It was, yeah. it was so easy. We yeah. just like open up our laptop and here we are live at South by Southwest. It's Tony's here actually. We have the Space Fan News. Yeah. And yeah. Like, like, hey, I'll just bring all the internet with us. Yeah. Well, and my... <laughs> yeah no, it was if good. I had that magic, it would have worked over there. Ben. Yeah, oh, really? You were able to You were able to stream, weren't you? Yeah, we got it. It was just very choppy and very, uh, very you know, it interrupted once or twice. Yeah. So. Okay. As soon as I see one view, oh, I see seven viewers. So I guess we can actually we can actually pretend that we're happening. Okay. Well, okay. we're pretending. <laughs> we're, all right. It's just faking. All right. Well, hi everybody. Uh, Fraser and Scott here. In meat space. In the flesh for the first time. <laughs> yes. Come get some. Oh. Really? It's the first time. This is yeah. the first time we've ever met. Yeah. Wow. So we're here for our virtual star party here from South by Southwest in Austin, Texas, where we've had our first clear night after two cloudy nights uh and oh it's been miserable <laughs> the weather's been horrible yeah we had a, a severe storm morning last night where they were actually so they simply closed up the big nasa tent and uh and we all had to uh we all had to go back early last night so tonight's the first night we didn't get any trial runs no nope. so this is this is we're gonna see how just long do it live we're gonna do it live do it live do it live <laughs> yeah so uh, and so joining us tonight uh we've got tony darnell from space fan news Space guys. Telescope Science Institute yep. Yep. representing over here, and they and they're really the big hosts of this whole event, yeah. and they're the ones that allowed us. They they flew us out here. They've been wonderful hosts to us this whole weekend, and uh, and as you can see, they also brought the biggest possible telescope for us to. Uh, well, we can't use it for the virtual star party, but we can at least have it in the background for the virtual star party. Yeah. The eyepiece is too big. Is that, <laughs> is that the problem we get? Yeah. And too much back focus. Oh my God. Oh. Yeah, we, yeah, we tried to. Yeah, we tried to connect it up, and uh, and it just wouldn't fit with the uh, with our with the camera, and so no, it didn't work. But uh, and also next is Karen Terpagan, who uh, was our host for uh, Science Online uh, just a couple about a month ago, right. and you brought. The wonderful NASA mascot, yes, Camilla. Camilla, she's been here. She helped tonight be in here. That's awesome. And has Camilla been having a fun time? Camilla's been having a great time. She's been meeting lots of people, talking about a lot of science. Wow, there. Oh well. Um, and so I think if if everyone can see, the sort of the coolest part about this whole thing is that right there. Yeah. Yeah. And so that is a life-size model of the James Webb Space Telescope here at South by Southwest. This is a monster. So it's the size of a tennis court. Uh, you can see one, just one of those segments. Oh, and here's Dr. <laughs> Pamela Cage going there. <laughs> Sorry, so, just photo bombing. <laughs> video bombing? Yes. So, so just one of those segments on the telescope back there is the size of the mirror on the Hubble Space Telescope. And you can see how much bigger this telescope is going to be. So uh, we've asked, and they said, no way you will ever be able to have that join the uh, the virtual star party. <laughs> we did ask, though. We really, really <laughs> we did. did. Yeah, we did ask, yeah. <laughs> we thought it would be a good idea. Good for, good for publicity, so. You know, you, you might as well try. Yeah. What are they going to say? No. And so, and so the other cool thing is we've actually got some telescopes set up here behind us, and so people have been, uh, been joining us for this actual real live virtual star party. Mm -hmm. uh, now, Scott, one thing that we need to let people know is we're going to be very low on battery power. The yes. one we were able to, to find some internet, we weren't able to uh, bring the battery, the the power out here. Power out. Yeah, so I think uh, we got one at 21%, <laughs> one at 62%. I got now about an hour you got over now, here. So oh, we might really? be good oh, on we'll this go. All right. Yeah. So now, now not just here uh, locally, also joining us remotely here, we've got our regular star party teams. Let's... Uh, Let's see who we've got here. We've got David Dickinson, who's in Florida, with Thanks. a cloudy view. <laughs> yes, Jupiter just went behind a cloud. Yep. Get it? But it's coming and going. Yeah, it's coming. Yeah. Jupiter's just a ninja right now. All right, awesome. What's gonna cool. And then we've got Gary Ganell, who's in Los Angeles. Hey, Gary, how's it going? Hi guys, good, good. So, Still light here. Yeah. So one of the things, just yeah. Well, that's the problem, right? Is because we're at South by Southwest, and it's forward in time somehow. Yeah. Yeah. It's like nine. Our, our TARDIS is behind JWST. <laughs> yeah, we just have to play yeah. around with it a little bit. Yeah, and so we're in Central Time. It's nine fifteen. Uh, Gary's on the Pacific Coast, and so it's uh, seven fifteen for him. So it's starting to get dark, and I'm, yeah, he'll be able to get something 
you know, some image. Uh, Daylight shortly. savings time. Yeah. <laughs> awesome. And we've got uh, Louis Mamakos. And Louis, you've got dark skies, but patchy clouds, right? That's right. Uh, dark skies, it was clear a bit earlier, and uh, right now it was, looks like it's somewhat opaque, but we'll see what happens. It's because we got the tech to work. All your skies are just going away. Well, yeah, <laughs> you brought the internet, but no more stars. And so, as the uh, as the night progresses, you might get a few more people to join us. Oh, it's Jupiter! Jupiter! Hey. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> All right. I see that. Hold on. Over there. Yeah. Nice. You can't see it. So, so this is this is. I think that's a really good Jupiter. Yeah. <laughs> That's wonderful. I'm I'm writing the game. Always surprised when we get these uh, this view. So nailed it, nailed it. <laughs> That's it. I believe we we can say that we pulled off our first on-site virtual star party with no power. With so, no yeah. Having seen Jupiter, I just wanted to come in and see how everything was going. We are actually still running outreach events, and uh, so I'm forcing people to do Cosmo Quest. Force them. Okay. <laughs> Resistance is few. Yeah. You will do. So, Pamela, science. what what have we been doing here at the uh, at the star party? I'm oh, sorry, at the at the. Uh, that, that's at all that really matters. Yeah, right, South by Southwest. Right. So, so NASA Interactive is here to work on engaging people and learning more about the future of what the James Webb Space Telescope is going to be allowing us to do. We have people here from Ball Aerospace who are showing off some of the technology. We have people here from Northrop Grumman. Uh, Microsoft is here helping us to see exactly where in space the JWST is going to be located out there beyond the moon. Uh, we have people giving science lectures and we're here with CosmoQuest showing people how today we're using citizen science to help us deal with the mammoth amounts of data we're getting from the Lunar Reconnaissance Orbiter, Messenger, Dawn, and in the future we're hoping that JWST will be part of our mission of doing citizen science as the hub will be in a few weeks when we launch a new project. That's really cool. And you've been very busy. We've been manning the booth, oh, talking yeah. to thousands of people. It's been really good here. The, these have been the most amazing days. They, they open the tent each day at noon. Tonight I'm giving my talk at 10.30 p.m. Uh, so it's it's end to end of the day and of course there's setup but I mean the awesome thing is first of all we get to meet Camilla the chicken which is yes. always wonderful. <laughs> Camilla's my new girlfriend. <laughs> <laughs> but, but we've had a whole lot of <laughs> we, we've had a whole lot of, of friends people that we only knew through social media fans of the show all come out and we're getting to inflict science and share science and uh, well, share our futures, so that's kind of awesome. Uh, yeah, so I think we're getting some comments that the uh, that the broadcast is kind of choppy. It's gonna happen. It's gonna happen. Yeah, <laughs> yeah we are. Is this over fourteen? You're gonna roll. Okay, yeah. we'll see you later. Bye. So, Tony, can you give Bye. us like a real overview of what's happening with the uh, like like why this why NASA set up why SCSI set up this this whole event and and to showcase this? Well, the big idea is to uh, just sort of start to raise public awareness. This idea was was uh, what belongs to Stratus, who's our EPO uh, guy, and he thought that if we wanted to reach an audience uh, of people who might not have ever heard about space, the, the James Webb Space Telescope, to come to this event with South by Southwest because this is where people uh, just converge on technology and there's a really friendly audience. And this whole weekend has been unbelievably positive for everybody. Yeah, it's been phenomenal. Yeah, it's, yeah. It's so the idea is just to raise awareness, let let people know that this thing is going up and what it can do, and the science it'll be doing. And the the response has just been overwhelming. Great. Yeah, and there's been some great exhibits in there. There was the great the Microsoft big visualization wall. Oh, that's right. With twenty, was so it Microsoft, twenty million square pixels? Twenty yeah, million pixels. Yeah. Yeah, twenty million by ten million or something like yeah. that. And uh, Microsoft was a big player, a big contributor to this, uh, both with the Viz wall and the. Worldwide Telescope, yeah. which yeah, you know, if you guys don't know about, if you guys out there have ever heard of it, it's a, it's a client planetarium visualization program that they've written that's really stunning. Yeah, yeah. It really is great. It's, it's yeah, amazing. we'd like to try and figure out a way to bring it into the virtual star party so that we can go from object to object and sort of put things in context for people. And that's something that Scott and I've been trying to figure that's out a way to enter. Yeah. We're using Stellarium, and that works pretty well, it but does. but there's you know I think there's a lot more 
Yeah, we're data thinking maybe like once a month we can plan out a star party and what we want to see and have the tour release immediately after on what we did each yeah. night. So to, to have a, a companion to go along with our live broadcast. Yeah, yeah. Um, so let's get some uh, let's get some images up. So we're gonna go back and we're gonna see the Jupiter as long as we can uh, as long as we can hold on to Jupiter. it. Jupiter. <laughs> Yes. So, Florida? so yeah. yeah, so David, so you're in Florida. How's your viewing conditions tonight? Uh, it was clearer earlier on, and now it's kind of clouding up, unfortunately. I'm kind of riding the game control up and down on the camera. As the clouds move in front, I crank it up so we can still kind of see it. Yeah, yeah. and uh, but, I'm, but I mean, for the times that it's getting pretty clear, you can, really can see the, the bands across yep. the planet, and I'm assuming you're going to be able to see the moons. It's funny, we've got four... Um, We've got four Dobsonian telescopes yeah, there in the background, dobs. yeah, and they're all focused in on Jupiter, and and they just look great. Although oh, yeah. the great yeah, red spots thing, turn forward right now. It looks better than yours, David. Sorry. <laughs> well, Sorry. Well, no, I, no, because here's the thing, though, because the ones that we've got behind us, um, because lots of people, because they're Dobsonians, they don't track, right. and so people are having to come up and look through the eyepiece, and so they're doing, a, they're using quite a wide field of view on right. the eyepieces, so they don't have to keep going and mess and messing with it. So Although it's very clear, it's a very small, very small yeah, right. a very small image. So that way, and, they don't have to drive their scope as they're looking. Yeah, yeah, exactly. <laughs> um, and then Lewis, now you took a couple of images. Your clouds are starting to settle in, but you, I know, took a couple of images just before you started. Yeah, that's right, Fraser. I, I took it, managed to get a couple of images in before the clouds arrived while you guys were getting set up. And the one I've got uh, on the screen now is uh, NGC uh, three zero seven nine. That's a galaxy. Uh, about 50 million light years away, but uh, <laughs> that's all just 50 million light years away in Ursa Major. But the other uh, neat object in, in this field, um, let me zoom in a little bit here. Um, I don't know if you can see the arrow pointing to oh, you put the, arrow. Yeah. the double yeah. star. Yeah. That's a uh, gravity gravitationally lens quasar. Um, I think oh, really? double, double quasar, oh, twin yeah. quasar. The golden fillet. So yeah. I have to make that's fun. really cool. So I guess <laughs> for people who don't know, this is this is a situation where you have a um, one object in front of another object, and the gravity of the foreground object acts like a lens to magnify the background object and make it and make it visible. So, so you're actually seeing then the an object that's a lot more distant and probably out of your ability of your telescope to see. Yeah, that, that object, uh, I mean, people ask me how far away can I see with my telescope, and the answer is uh, 8.7 billion light years. When you use a whole other telescope as a lens. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> so you use a whole other galaxy as, as a lens for your telescope. Hey, it was provided for him. It was it's provided for source. Yeah. You know, he's able to. Oh, the great. Same way. There he is. So here we go. Alberto. Hey, Alberto. How's it going? Hi, guys. So here we go. We got Alberto. Thank you very much, Alberto, for yes. being you, here. For being here. Are and you con kidding? And congratulations on this wonderful event and the fantastic model of the James. I'm very, very happy. And so, so you now, just before we did this event, we had the uh, sorry, a Guinness Book of World Records mm -hmm. attempt Attempts. for the yeah. largest astronomy uh, class. How did it go? Uh, yeah, we actually beat the record. Really? Yeah. 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 So, so 526. The previous record yes. was uh, 458. 458, right. So by quite a few. So 526 people. And a chicken. And a chicken. Yeah. Chicken. And a chicken. And a chicken. Yeah. Wow. Yeah. yeah. Yes. Took, a, uh, took an astronomy class, you know, in they one They learned place. about spectra. Yeah. 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 Which yeah. is actually not the most uh, approachable subject. In the yeah. sense, it's, it's nice to see colors and everything, but it's hard. So these people literally stuck it. Suck it through for yeah, in that, the cold. It's actually that, pretty cold now, was, right? Yeah, it yeah. is really cold right now. <laughs> they're, really, they're really hardcore guys, right? Yeah, well, you yeah. know, we promised we'd come and set it up and do our virtual star party right here. Yeah, that's right. Say hi. Yeah, it's great. Well, once again, we'll let you go. I know you're really busy. Thank you once again for Thank having you guys. us. Yes. Love you guys. Way to go, All right. Love you guys. Congrats, buddy. Thank you. Bye. 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 Oh, Camilla, I got chicks. one. <laughs> because of my chicks, but not my chickens. <laughs> I've just been cheated on. Oh, right in front of you. Oh, so uh, so Lewis, what's involved to take an image like this? Uh, this image is a five-minute-long uh, exposure I took, and this is uh, just not through any color filters, just a luminance image, and managed to get it before the clouds came. So I was pretty happy about that. That's really great. Um, and yet, now have you been able to get an image of comet pan stars yet? I have not. It's uh, pretty close to the sun in the sky, and my horizon on, at the west is uh, not really that great. So, 
it'll be a little while before I'm able to. Can you do something about your horizon? <laughs> can you? <laughs> I mean, <laughs> dig a hole in your horizon. We've. We've well, the snow's heard... all melted, so maybe I can get to the top of the hill now. So, <laughs> <laughs> now we've heard maybe next next week. What do you think? I saw it from Florida tonight. Did you oh, see it from Florida, in, David? David, yeah. really? Yeah, okay. yeah I've got an image of it up right now. Oh, you, got okay. a, you got a picture there of it. Oh, great! I was gonna okay. say, picture yeah. didn't happen. <laughs> no. Oh, it's, nice. Uh, that's that's from about two hours ago. Oh, really? That's awesome. Oh, that's fantastic. Yeah. Okay. Yeah, it's not naked eye quite yet. It's it's. Uh, I could only see it with binoculars, and when I started taking images, I could catch. It's got maybe a, a first magnitude uh, coma there in a little tiny tail. It's not yeah. really uh, easy to see just yet. So, you know, how long of exposure do you think you're going to have to do? Is that just a live? That, just sure. that was about a three second exposure right there okay. at ISO 1600 with a 200 millimeter lens. Oh, use a two hundred millimeter lens. So, yeah. so in theory, if you had your camera hooked up to your telescope and you did a long exposure, you'd probably get a nice big yeah. tail. Yeah, yeah, like with a Malin cam, you could probably get a pretty good image of it. Great. Right. Well, maybe maybe we can try that next week if if your skies are clear. Possibly. <laughs> Possibly. No, you will. You will. I don't know. Yeah. I don't know if my webcam would catch it. First magnitude, it might. It might catch something that the the new. I was surprised how star like the nucleus looked. I thought it was going to be a more of yeah. a faint, fuzzy kind of nucleus. Now, now, are people going to be able to see this with the unaided eye, though? I mean, for the next couple of weeks? Once it gets up over the Merc, uh, the moon is going to be very near it on Tuesday night and Wednesday night. So that's yeah. going to provide a good... Object, huh? uh, that's that's going to provide a good uh, yeah. kind of target to aim at to see it. Yeah. Um, uh, sorry, Karen was getting really cold. I could see her shivering. <laughs> Scott's I mean. doing the same thing. I'm, no, no, it's tough. I'm a manly man. No, you're tough. Uh, uh, you, you brought a coat, though. Yeah, you um, did. <laughs> yeah, all right. Oh, yeah, and, then, the and then while Gary's uh, skies darken and uh, he's going to just taunt us with the rosette. Yeah, I think he's just taunting you. With yeah, the he is. He is. Yeah. Yeah, absolutely. Whoa, that's from a telescope. That's from. No, that's, they're, they're showing it now. That can't be. No, no it's no. not live. It's yeah. not live. No. Okay. So what? So so when did you capture this picture, Gary? Um, this is about a year ago, and this one was with the uh, narrow band filters, the hydrogen, um, sulfur, and oxygen. So this yeah. is from my backyard, and hydrogen's mapped to red on this one. That's fantastic. I'm starting to pull out Orion here, so yeah. let me bring it up. Let's see. Can you guys hear him okay now? No, they're not talking. No, he's not talking. Yeah. <laughs> that, who, right. me? Yeah, no, it's okay. We got it. You're good. You're That's good. Better. Yeah. Okay. Awesome. Okay, so now we're going to go to uh, Lewis. to Lewis's view. Lewis, what do we got here now? Are you muted, Lewis? Sorry, just un oh. yeah, I, I unmuted my microphone. Uh, I have uh, NGC 2903, a uh, barred spiral uh, galaxy in Leo, about uh, 30 million light years Beautiful. away. Yeah, really nice. That's fantastic. And uh, that's a 10-minute uh, long uh, exposure. And if we kind of, I zoomed in a little bit, but there's another small galaxy over oh, here. Oh, neat. And another small one right here, and there's probably a few more hiding in here, too. Uh, I think there's actually one right up around in here. Um, th this is an object I've been actually working on over the last uh, the, uh, last few nights. Um, so this, this this will eventually get added into the stack of the other images along with uh, the the color data, and hopefully I have something uh, prettier to look at in uh, in a few days. Yeah, oh, that's awesome. That's great. Um, just to warn people, we're down to twenty eight percent, twenty seven percent. It is guzzling my battery on my uh, on my uh, on my laptop. So uh, I give us about another five minutes or so before we have to wrap this up. So now, Gary, is this live? Are we are yep. we got a live view? Oh, nice. Okay. Oh, awesome. yeah. Wow. Nice. Wow. That's unbelievable. This, this is hydrogen. Have you not seen this before, Tony? Yeah. Is, I, no, you, you're I'm, like, oh, I love I'm what like you it. guys do, but I've never seen any of it. <laughs> That's not true. I, I, I'm appreciating what I'm seeing. <laughs> all right, all right. Can, well, can I can no, I get in? in we're not going to give you a hard time. Yeah. Wait, wait. Tell Gary how beautiful it is. It's all right. That's all right. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, absolutely. Great, Send me a letter on it. <laughs> yeah, that's a letter. Okay. Uh, so, I try to be so, supportive. That's a, how, so how long did you do this uh, this one for? This is only a 10 second. Uh, yeah. I can't do a 60 second yet because the uh, sky is too light. There's just going to be too much uh, background. But we've right. got a nice new moon tonight, which is great. So yeah, it's, if, it's coming uh, down here. Yeah, yeah, and so for here, we've got you know as dark skies as we can get in Austin. Yeah, in, in downtown Austin. It's yeah. dark as it can be. Yeah. 
under the street lights. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> and but, the big lit up telescope right behind us. Yeah, that's great. Um, that's really cool. Yeah, no, that's great. And you can actually, I mean, the thing I like about these sort of short exposures, you can actually get a chance to see the stars in the trapezium, and that's that really bright, blown-out area that's in the middle of the of the Orion Nebula. And the problem is with the Orion Nebula, those stars are so bright that uh, attempting to to show, like, the really faint uh, nebulosity over the rest of the nebula just makes that completely washed out. And right. so it's nice to see those really quick exposures as well. So we got another image from Lewis here. Oh, nice. Nice, Lewis. What do we got? Awesome. Uh, NGC 2403. Uh, this is just a 90-second exposure I grabbed really so quick. Now, where is, where is this located? Oh, man, that's a tough question. So let me uh, ask space, the, uh, the Internet. In space. Man, in space. I know. <laughs> I, 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 first in your bubble if, you know, over but here. If we just look in space, then I'm still not going to find it. So I was hoping for maybe Eventually something Eventually you'll find specific. it. But eventually. <laughs> eventually, yeah. <laughs> when I've mapped out the entire sky, I will yeah. have found it. Give you something to do. Yeah. Uh, this is in uh, this is near M eighty one in uh, in the camel or a camel uh, par, low part. I don't know. What are you professionals? Yeah, camel we don't have any PhD all. astronomers here. You have a PhD, do you? <laughs> no, no, no. <laughs> no. All right. Um, and looking good. Yeah, <laughs> that's great. That's really fantastic. So, how's your how's your sky, David? Is, you, is it all clouds now? Yeah, it's pretty much clouds right now, yeah. I'm kind of watching yeah. here every few minutes to see if Jupiter pops well, back up. Well, why don't we take a second then and actually show people what your setup is, because I don't think people have actually seen. They see you sort of off to the corner. Can we see your, Mine, your telescope setup? You can see it kind of off here in the corner. Mine is a very low-budget $20 webcam that I bought from Walmart, and I pulled the lens off the front, and I glued on a eyepiece adapter, and it's just aimed right there through the telescope. I usually run K3 CCD tools for stacking, and Registax for processing. It does planetary and lunar images, bright objects. It won't do fainter objects. And double stars, it'll do. Uh, and what's the uh, and what's the telescope? This is a Celestron C8. This is a mid 1990s version C8. I've had other telescopes bigger come and go, but I've always this is my star party scope. Easy nice. to throw in the car and just easy to tear down and set back up. That's fantastic. My battery is now in the red. <laughs> yes, it is. Can I ask a quick question? Yeah, go ahead. So, so you just the did, last sorry. time... <laughs> oh, oh. Hold on, we're going to go back to us here. Yeah. The last time I uh, used Registax was back in the last Mars opposition. was about, what, six years ago, something like that? Has it changed much since then? Because I haven't used it very much over the years. I mean, is it no, still it, pretty much the same? It, no, real, Registax hasn't changed. It's still freeware, which is kind of cool. Right, uh, right. K3 CCD tools used to be free when I started doing web stacking back in 2003, 2004, something like that. Now he charges, but that's a pretty good program too. Uh, but I, I like K3 CCD tools for camera control, and Registax is better for just after uh, image processing. But that's it's a really good platform. I like that. So, is there any freeware that's uh, camera control, or do you, is uh, that pretty much there? There probably is, but I just I went through the learning curve with K3 CCD tools, so I stuck with that. There probably well, probably is some. a lot of a lot of the guys with the uh, with the virtual star party will use like backyard EOS. Oh, okay. Yeah, that, and that's yeah. good if it's, they're gonna if I they're gonna use twenty it. bucks. Is it? Yeah, yeah, and that you know, and that gives you a lot of camera control, long exposure stuff like that. Okay. Um, uh, Gary, what do you use for yours? Um, I run mine with um, you just uh, <laughs> Maxim DL. Use Max Maxim DL, DL. yeah, okay. to control it, yeah. And then Lewis, you oh, check this out! I love this. Oh yeah. Oh yeah, yeah. It's uh, I'm, I'm, the, the scope is on its way back to the park position. Uh, <laughs> right. Yeah, I also use uh, Maxim DL uh, with a, uh, a QSI 583 uh, WSG camera, which is a purpose-built camera for astronomy with a filter wheel and a Peltier cooler that cools by CCD down to minus 20 degrees C. I used to love your uh, your flare at the end of it. Yeah, <laughs> the headache protector. Yes. Yeah, the headache preventer. Warning: You're about to get a concussion. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> so, so Gary, have you done an even quicker exposure? What's yeah. this? Yes, this is one second. A one second, second exposure. exposure. Yeah. See the trapezium. You can also see that I'm out of focus. I didn't get time to do a good focus. So yeah. Yeah, we were rushing you. Yeah. Yeah. This is a one yeah. second exposure in hydrogen alpha, and you can see the the trapezium. That's fantastic. Oh, yeah. That's great. Okay, well, you know what? I think we're going to wrap this up now. We're, we're running out of battery juice, and I want to sort of, uh, before it's, it ends with a, with a, with a crunch. Flop. Yeah, exactly. 
So, uh, so once again, hey, Tony, thanks for joining us yeah, on man. site. Let me, let it's me fantastic. This. this has yeah, been a lot of great. fun. Thank you. Um, and so thanks to David in Florida, and then hopefully yeah, David no and guys will clear up next week, and you'll be able to join us. Thanks well, to Gary. And I, and I know, Thank you for uh, you know, me. I know we brought you in at the uh, sort of while it's still daylight, and so again, I really appreciate it. And Lewis, sorry your clouds uh, came in, but thanks for showing us that quasar. That was amazing. Yeah. And, thanks, uh, Fraser. Yeah, and I've I've set you all the challenge of let's get pan stars next week. That's <laughs> yeah. if you can do it, we'll do it for science. And Scott, thank you very much Razor. for meeting in person yes. and uh, and doing this all live from South by South. Yeah, it's been awesome. It's been, it's been a lot of fun. All uh, right. Fraser smells a little bit in person. <laughs> oh, do, do I really? Yeah. Oh no! It smells like a Canadian. A Canadian, yeah, yeah. yeah. It's bacon and then the bacon and, and yeah, has some timbits. Yeah, you get a double double, eh? <laughs> <laughs> Awesome. All right. Well, thanks, everybody. They live from South by Southwest, your virtual star party, for the James Webb Space Teleco Telescope Edition. Telescope, yes. Yeah, we'll get that in the uh, in the star party next time. All right. All right. All right. Bye, everyone.